so good morning all of you i am professor p r jagtap from dy patil college of engineering and technology kolhapur maharashtra today we are going to learn a design of dex lab bridge and we will take one problem related to this the problem will be based upon design of dex lab so first of all we should understand what is meant by design of or what is dex lab rcc slab type dex are generally referred as a culverts and used for spans up to 9 meter so for larger spans we can go for prestressed concrete slabs and in case of culvert slab is supported on two opposite sides of piers or abutments the deck slab is designed as a one way slab to support dead load and live load with impact load and on national highways these deck slabs are designed to support irc class a a loading or irc class a type loading or b type loading so this is brief introduction related to deck slabs the spans up to 9 meter we can design as a deck slabs so where there are only two supports at the ends or the slabs are supported on the abutments you can see the figure of uh, any deck slab here there is no any intermediate support here the slabs are supported on only end supports you can we can call it as a abutments so let us have one example related to this so here design a deck slab culvert for national highway crossing for the following particulars so here the clear span is given as 6 meter carriage way 7.5 meter wide two lane road it is width of the footpath is given as 1 meter on either side bearing coat 80 mm thickness width of the bearing on which slab is resting on the supports that is 400 mm loading we have to assume irc class a a tracked vehicle and materials used for construction that is m25 concrete and fp415 steel so design the reinforced concrete slab deck and sketch the details of the reinforcement design should conform to the specifications of irc 6 2000 and irc 21 2000 codes so this is the problem statement given we have to design a deck slab the road is crossing or the bridge is crossing over the national highway and for this particulars we have to design a deck slab so here in the problem given uh, clear span as 6 meters width of the road is given as 7.5 meter path width on either side is 1 meter wide bearing coat 80 mm thickness and the bearing width of the bearing as 400 mm and loading is irc class aa tracked vehicle material m25 concrete and ap415 steel we can assume this permissible stresses as sigma st as 200 newton per mm square q required for depth calculation 1.1 j is 0.9 so these permissible stresses we can assume or we can calculate by using working stress method formulas so just go towards the solution we have to first of all find the depth of the slab and effective span required for the span uh, that is bridge so the overall thickness of the slab is assumed to be 80 mm per meter span of the deck we can assume the thickness of the slab as 80 mm per meter length so overall depth of the slab is 80 into 6 as we have 6 meter span clear span so we can multiply it by 6 so 80 mm per meter run uh, per meter run so you can see 80 into 6 you can uh, take as a 480 mm or uh, simply you can assume that the depth of the slab as 500 mm so using 20 mm diameter bars and clear cover of 30 mm we have effective depth of slab as 
500 minus 10 minus 30 10 is nothing but the we have assumed 20 mm diameter bars so at the center of the bar the distance will be 20 by 2 that will becomes 10 so effective depth of the slab will be 500 minus 10 minus 30 so it becomes 460 mm so you can assume the effective depth as 460 mm so see this figure what we have to design this is a simple figure A clear span is 6 meter that is given that is the distance between the two supports road width that is B capital B that is nothing but from where the vehicles are moving that is a road width and on either side there is a footpath and in between that that is a roadway. So vehicle moves from left hand side to the right hand side. So the middle portion is the effective width of dispersion that we will discuss afterwards. So this is the what we have to design. We have to design a depth of the deck slab. So on which the vehicles are moving, that depth of the slab we have to design in this in this problem. So this is one of the figure which shows you the details see that the difference between width and span span don't confuse in the span and width width is the dimensions of the bridge from where vehicles are moving that is nothing but the width and span is the distance between the two supports so if there are uh, in between there is a one support then there will be a two spans so span is the distance between the two supports and width is the vehicular movement distance that is nothing but the width so now we have to find effective length of the bridge so effective length of the bridge is nothing but a distance between center to center distance between the two supports or span plus depth effective depth so you can see effective depth span of the bridge is nothing but is the list of clear span plus effective depth that is 6 plus 0 0.46 6.46 meter and clear span plus bearing width that is 6 plus 0 0.4 meter the so width of the bearing we have 400 mm so that is equal to 6.4 meter so you can provide a effective span is therefore taken as small l is equal to 6.4 meters next we have to calculate dead load bending moment and shear force dead load shear force so we have a depth of the slab as 0.5 meters or 500 mm you can assume unit weight of concrete as 24 kilonewton per meter cube so dead load of the slab will become 12 kilo, kilonewton per meter square dead load of the wearing coat we have 80 mm thickness of the wearing coat as per given in the problem and 22 kilonewton per meter cube will be the unit weight of the wearing coat and that becomes 1.76 so total load becomes 12 plus 1.76 it is equal to 13.76 or you can take it as a 14 kilonewton per meter square so dead load bending moment you can simply calculate it by wl square by 8 so 14 multiplied 14 multiplied by 6.4 square divided by 8 you will get it as a 72 kilonewton meter similarly dead load shear force you can calculate by wl by 2 so 14 into 6.4 by 2 it will becomes 45 kilonewton so dead load bending moment 72 kilonewton and Dead load shear force is 44.8 or 45 kilonewton. Next, we have to go for live load bending moment and shear force. See, in the uh, design of bridges or design of deck slabs, very important thing is the design of uh, consideration of the live load. So, dead load you can directly calculate by considering the depth 
but live load as the uh, many vehicles are traveling continuously over the bridge so live load is very important so as per irc 21 we have live load consideration depend upon the type of vehicle that is irc class aa vehicle irc class a vehicle irc class b vehicle or the newly class that is irc 70r loading so like this there are so many that is these are the various types of loadings for live load so depend upon that we have to design or we have to calculate live load bending moment and shear force so according to the our problem we have to design this deck slab for irc class aa tracked vehicle again there are two types of vehicles tracked and wheeled vehicles so tracked vehicles we know the examples of tracked vehicles as a vehicles used for military purposes and other things so here we have to first of all find the width of the deck slab so width of the deck slab is nothing but road width plus footpath width on the both sides so the given road width as a 7.5 meter and footpath 1 meter on either side so the total width of the slab becomes 9.5 meters we have effective span as 6.4 meter so as per irc we have to find out the irc code we have to find out the factor k b by l that is 9.5 by 6.4 it becomes 1.48 and from table we can find the value of alpha coefficient alpha for triple s condition that is simply supported slabs and for k value 1.48 we have alpha value as 2.84 so you can assume that 1.48 or we can take it simply as a 1.5 so for 1.5 b by l the alpha value is 2.88 from this table for simply supported slab next column is for cs that is continuous slabs so we have we are uh, this is the example of simply supported slab so we have to take alpha as 2.88 for 1.5 b by l ratio so this is the example of irc class aa loading for tracked vehicles see this figure so according to irc code this is a tracked vehicle front view and side view in front view you can see two tracks which carry 350 kN load each width of one track is 0.85 meter space between the two tracks is 1.2 meter and the total load carried by this vehicle tracked vehicle is 700 kN 350 plus 350 that becomes 700 kN the base width the vehicle the area of the vehicle or the length of the vehicle which touches the ground that is 3.6 meter and total length of the vehicle is 7.2 meters so these are the standard dimensions we have to consider these dimensions and this load for further calculations 0.85 0.85 is the width of each track distance between the two tracks is 1.2 meter total load of the track is 700 kN and base width of the vehicle is 3.6 meter so these values we have to consider in further calculations next we have to find out the effective width of dispersion It can be calculated by following formula what is the effective width of dispersion that is nothing but uh, the area on which the load will be dispersed or distributed that we have to find out that width so if the width of the vehicle in this case we can say that the width of the vehicle or the track of the width track width of the vehicle is 0.85 meter but the load will not be on this 0.85 meter but it will be dispersed it will be distributed some more areas than this 0.85 meter that we have to calculate as a effective width of dispersion it is given by the formula alpha x 1 minus x by l plus b where x is the distance of cg of the wheel from the end so you can see x you can see the in this figure span divided by 2 you can say effective span divided by 2 you will get that x distance 
and dispersed area you can see in this figure effective length so length of the wheel that is 3.6 meter just now we have seen but the load will not be on the 3.6 meter distance or 0.85 meter distance it will be on the some more area that is called as effective length of dispersion and effective width of dispersion so here x is 3.2 meter that is effective length by 2 B1 is width of dispersion area that is W plus 2H that area we have to take. W is the constant width of the tire from class AA loading for tracked vehicle that is 0.85 meter just now we have seen and H is the thickness of the wearing coat that is 0.08 meters. So therefore B1 becomes 0.85 plus 2 times 0.08 equal to 1.01. Now here you can see this the effective width of dispersion for single wheel can be calculated from the following formula just now we have seen here in the picture you can see one wheel only the effective width of dispersion ve up is nothing but that see that the shaded area is the wheel area or the track area and dotted area is nothing but the dispersed area dispersed width and dispersed the length so here just now we have calculated alpha as a 2.88 x as 3.2 l is 6.4 b1 as 1.01 so from this you will get b e up as 5.56 meters 5.56 meters so if now as there are two two tracks or two wheels of that vehicles we have to calculate effective width of dispersion for two wheels and it is equal to just see this figure so effective width of dispersion for single wheel is 5.56 meter thus it becomes 5 for double wheel we have to calculate it by this figure so 5.56 by 2 you will get 2.65 or you can take it as 2.65 only that is not it is 2. 78 so it is 2.65 so here you can see one wheel from left hand so in the figure left hand side footpath length is 1000 mm then we have to keep a 1200 distance 1200 mm distance from end of the one of the wheel that distance we have to take next 850 is the 0.85 meter width of the track 850 mm then 1200 mm distance between the two tracks and again 850 mm that is the another wheel width and dispersed width that is 2.65 meter 5.56 by 2 that is nothing but the from center of the one wheel to the end that is so one wheel we have 5.56 distance Similarly, for two wheels, it is not multiplied by two, but we that some area will be mixed in between two wheels. So that's why the distance becomes left hand side 2.625 because 2.65 is not available on left hand side because of the standard dimensions according to IRC. So on left hand side, it will be 2.625. In between middle, there will be a distance 2.05, and uh, at last, there will be a 5.56 by 2, that is 2.65. So that becomes 7.455 meters. This is the effective width of dispersion, and next one is the effective length of dispersion. We have the standard formula length of tire contact plus 2 times overall thickness of the deck, including the thickness of the wearing coat. So we have length of tire contact as 3.6 meter according to figure just now we have seen the width base of the wheel as 3.6 meter IRC for irc class a loading thickness of the deck slab we have assumed it as a 500 mm calculated and wearing coat as 80 mm so effective length of dispersion will be 3.6 plus 2 times 0.5 plus 0.08 4.76 so we have effective length of dispersion as 4.76 meter and effective width of dispersion for two wheels just now we have calculated it as a 7.455 so therefore the wheel load will be dispersed on the area of 
4.76 meter by 7.455 meters next we have impact factor so very important point related to live load that is impact factor so according to irc class aa loading for 25 percent uh, because impact factor is considered 25 percent for the spans up to 5 meter and it is linearly reduces to 10 percent for span up to 9 meter so for 5 meter span it is 25 percent for 9 meter span it is 10 percent so as the span increases impact factor reduces that's why impact factor reduces so therefore for 5 meter it is 25 percent for 9 meter it is 10 percent by interpolating it we will get that as a for our span 6.4 meter span we will get it as a 19.75 percent or you can increase the load by 0.197 so intensity of load so how much live load will be there that is equal to we have to increase the 700 what is 700 now it is load of the tracked vehicle class aa loading that is 350 kilonewton on each wheel on each track that becomes 700 kilonewton so we have to increase this by impact factor of 1.197 divided by the area 4.68 by 7.38 so that becomes 4 23.61 kilonewton per meter square that is 4.76 not 4.68 so that becomes 23.61 kilonewton per meter square that is the intensity of live load next so you can see this figure live load so load will be exactly, live load will be exactly on the center this is 4.76 meters and figure shows the live load intensity is 23.61 kilonewton per meter square its distance is 4.76 and uh, span effective span is 6.4 meters again here you can see this you can calculate the array and just from this you can calculate the bending moment at the center the bending moment at the center becomes 113 kilonewton meter so array and rb you can calculate and at the central center of the span there will be a maximum bending moment that will becomes 113 kilonewton meter so we have dead load bending moment already calculated in the previous steps that is 72 kilonewton live load bending moment is 113 kilonewton meter so the design bending moment design bending moment mu becomes dead load bending moment plus live load bending moment that is 72 plus 113 it is equal to 185 kilonewton meter 185 kilonewton meter next we have mu is equal to qbd square so we mu we have just calculated q is 1.1 permissible stresses or design constants we have calculated already and b is 1000 we have to consider 1000 mm strip and d so from this we will get small d as 410 mm so effective depth required is 410 mm effective depth provided is 460 mm therefore design is set as concerned to depth next area of tension reinforcement area of reinforcement we have to calculate by this formula ast is equal to m by sigma st into j into d sigma st into j into d so here sigma st is 200 already it is given in the problem or we have to assume that in the first step only j is 0.9 d is 460 we have calculated it and from this you will get m we have 185 new kilonewton meter from this you can calculate this ast as 2234 mm square 22 
थ्री फोर एम एम स्क्वेर नेक्स्ट स्पेसिंग यू कैन एज्यूम ट्वेंटी एम एम डायमीटर बार्स ऑलरेडी एट द टाइम ऑफ कैलकुलेशन ऑफ इफेक्टिव डेप्थ वी आर एज्यूम्ड दैट एज अ ट्वेंटी एम एम डायमीटर बार्स वी आर एज्यूम्ड सो वी कैन हैव एरिया ऑफ वन बार इक्वल टू थ्री वन फोर एम एम एरिया ऑफ वन ट्वेंटी एम एम डायमीटर बार एज थ्री वन फोर एम एम स्क्वेर सो फ्रॉम दैट यू कैन कैलकुलेट स्पेसिंग एज वन फोर्टी एम एम वन थाउजेंड इन टू एरिया ऑफ वन बार डिवाइडेड बाई टू टू थ्री फोर दैट इज ए एस टी रिक्वायर्ड फ्रॉम दैट यू कैन कैलकुलेट दैट एज अ वन फोर्टी एम एम सो लेट एस प्रोवाइड ट्वेंटी एम एम डायमीटर बार्स एट वन फोर्टी एम एम सेंटर टू सेंटर सो स्टील प्रोवाइडेड इज इक्वल टू 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 फोर फोर टू एम एम स्क्वेर प्रोवाइडेड स्टील इज ट्वेंटी next bending moment for distribution steel we have to find out bending moment for distribution steel it is equal to 0.3 into live load bending moment plus 0.2 into dead load bending moment so from this you will get that as Point three into one one three plus point two into seventy two. You will get it as a forty nine kilo newton meter. And using twelve mm diameter bars as the distribution effective depth is equal to four sixty that already calculated minus ten that is remaining depth of the steel main steel that is twenty mm diameter bar minus six that is distribution steel divided by 2 area of uh, diameter of distribution steel divided by 2 so that becomes 460 minus 10 minus 6 it is equal to 444 mm so from this you can calculate ast for distribution steel as 613 mm square so spacing of 12 mm diameter bars equal to 1000 into area of one bar 113 Divided by six one three, you will get it as one eighty four mm, or you can provide distribution steel at one fifty mm center to center. This is about the distribution steel. Next, we have to check for shear stresses. Check for shear stresses. Here. For maximum shear force at support, IRC class AA tracked vehicle is arranged as shown in figure. We have to arrange the vehicle as shown in figure so that there will be a maximum shear force. So it will be arranged. Uh, one of the wheel will be on the one of the support. It will be arranged in such a way that there will be a maximum shear force. so the one wheel will be on the one support so you can see this in the figure so the x becomes 2.38 here because 4.76 divided by 2 effective span we have 6.4 meter and we have to calculate now intensity of load so x is 4. Point, so distance of the center of gravity that we have calculated it is 2.38 now effective width of dispersion on one wheel You, we have this formula alpha x1 minus x by l plus b1 all the constants are same except x x is here 2.38 so that becomes 5.25 meter and uh, again we have to see this is this we have to calculate for two tracks or two wheels so effective width of dispersion for two wheels that is for one wheel it is 5.25 divided by 2 it is 2.62 So 2.62 on either sides. In between that, there will be a 2.05 meter distance. So this is the effective width of dispersion for two wheels. That becomes 2.62 plus 2.05 plus 2.62. It becomes 7.3 meters. 7.3 meters. 
Next, effective length of dispersion we have already calculated. It is 4.7. Effective width of dispersion for two wheels it is 7.3 meters. So the area dispersed area for shear force it will be 4.76 by 7.30 meters. Intensity of loading we have one point that uh, intensity of impact factor we have calculated multiplied by seven. 700 divided by this 4.76 into 7.30. It is 1.197, not 1.217 impact factor. So that becomes 24.10 kilonewton per meter square. Intensity of loading. 24.10 kilonewton per meter square. That is intensity of loading. So from this, you can calculate maximum shear force is the reaction at A that is equal to 24.1. 0 into 4.76 and this you will get live load shear force as 72 kilonewton. Design shear force is equal to dead load shear force plus live load shear force. Dead load shear force we have calculated it as a 45 kilonewton plus this 72 you will get design shear force VU as 117 kilonewton. 117 kilonewton. Now here we have permissible shear stresses in the concrete according to table number 23 given in the IS456. Depends upon. So this table are uh, permissible stress, shear stresses in concrete. These are this is table for working stress method, not for limit state method. So this table is given at the last of the IS456 2000. Table number 23 depends upon grade of concrete and percentage of steel. And these are the factors, K factors and maximum shear stresses, tau C max. What is the importance of this that we will see? So design shear stress, tau V is VU by BD. So VU we have calculated divided by this. So that becomes 0.254 Newton per mm square. So design shear stress, tau V is less than permissible shear stress, tau C. It should be uh, design shear stress tau v must be less than permissible shear stress so permissible shear stress we have to calculate from the table number 23 it depends upon percentage of steel that is 100 ast by bd 100 into 2242 that is ast provided as a main steel divided by 1000 into d is 397.5 just now it is calculated 0.48 percentage so for this 0.48 percentage, we have tau C value as for 0.48 percentage for M20 grade concrete, we have tau C value as 0.30 Newton per mm square. And from this, for solid slabs, permissible shear stress is given as K times tau C. See here in this table. As per the clause 5.2.1.1 IS456-2000 for solid slabs, the permissible shear stress in concrete shall be K times tau C, where K has the value given below. So overall depth of the slab, K 300 or more, then 275 to 50 like this. So our depth is 500 mm. We have to take K as a one one. Tau C becomes K times tau C, K into 0.34, it is equal to, no, K into 0.30 actually, it is 0.30 Newton per mm square. So tau V is 0.254 is less than K times tau C, so therefore design is safe. Next one, this details of reinforcement. So already we have provided uh, 20 mm diameters we have calculated spacing of 20 mm diameter bars at 140 mm center to center as a main steel. 12 mm diameter bars at 150 mm center to center as a distribution steel. Again, we have to provide four bars of 20 mm diameter bars at top and bottom in footpath and they are connected by 10 mm rings at 300 mm center to center and to prevent shrinkage cracks. Provide supplementary reinforcement of 10 mm diameter bars at 300 mm center to center in both ways at top and slab, top of the slab. So, these details we have to provide in the steel in the bridge. 
so see this uh, cross section of the deck slab along width cross section of the deck slab along span so we have 20 mm diameters bars at 140 mm center to center distribution steel 12 mm diameter bars at 150 mm center to center at footpath we have provided 420 mm diameter bars at bottom 420 mm diameter bars at top they are connected with 10 mm diameter rings at 300 mm center to center to avoid shrinkage cracks we have to provide additional steel as a 10 mm diameter bars at 300 mm center to center at the top in both ways we have 80 mm diameter 80 mm bearing coat 500 mm depth of the slab width of the slab is 7.5 meter and width of the footpath as 1 meter this is the cross section of the deck slab along width and cross section of the deck slab along span we have it rests on the abutment of 400 mm support so similar you can see the main steel is moved at the top by bending it so this is cross section of deck slab along span and cross section of deck slab along width you can see here also don't confuse in the width and span so this is the cross section along the length along the width on either side there will be a footpath cross section of the deck slab along width and this is cross section of the deck slab along span along span so here the span is there so the bridge is rests on the two supports so we have assumed it uh, bearing width as a 400 mm the main steel bars at the bottom distribution bars will be at the top and these main bars we have to take it to the top side also by bending it again we have provided 10 mm diameter bars at 300 mm center to center at as a top steel for our to avoid shrinkage cracks and uh, we have 500 mm depth of the slab 80 mm thickness of the bearing coat and the main steel we have provided as a 20 mm diameter bars at 140 mm center to center the overall span of the slab is 6 meters so this is about the design of the deck slab so this deck slabs again used up to the span of uh, 9 meter they are designed as a one way slabs they are simply supported slabs resting on only two supports so this is about the design procedure and this is this uh, picture shows the reinforcement details of the deck slab so we will see this this uh, deck slab we have just now we have seen this so thank you very much